aha te mea nui o te ao. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. What is the most important thing in the world? It is people, it is people, it is people. In my opinion, New Zealand is the greatest country on earth. We're made up of different kinds of people. People from all walks of life. People from, with different ethnicities, different languages, different ages, and even different opinions. But in our country, we like to believe that at the end of the day, despite all our differences, we're all equal. That we have equal opportunities, equal uh, quality of life, and equal health. But the sad truth is, that's just not the reality in our country. Research shows that there's one group in particular that really struggles in our society. And the group that I'm talking about is the elderly. Statistics show that elderly people are at significantly higher risk for experiencing all kinds of conditions and diseases. But there's one condition in particular that is predominantly seen in just the elderly, and that problem is known as falls. Falls is a complex and common condition within the New Zealand society. But I believe that we can use a simple and straightforward solution to answer the problem of falls. And today I'd like, you take, uh, I'd like to take you through that real solution. But before we get started, let's talk about what falls actually are. The World Health Organization defines a fall as an unexpected event that results in an individual coming to rest on the ground or a floor. It's a very real problem in New Zealand. In New Zealand, up to 60% of individuals aged 65 and over will experience a fall. It's estimated that every day about, about 20 people will uh, suffer a fall-related fracture or dislocation. In New Zealand, to manage falls and fall-related injuries each year, it costs our country over $350 million. That is a lot of money. Research has shown that our population is actually aging, that more people are living longer. And as more and more people live longer, the problem and the prevalence of falls is going to become even larger and greater in the uh, nearby future. And just to put falls into perspective and to show you how big of a problem this really is, let me compare it to uh, some of the most common conditions. So the burden of falls is the same as the burden of cancer and diabetes combined in New Zealand. So we need to do something about this problem now. The sad thing about falls is that it strikes fear into the hearts of the elderly. It prevents them from being active and looking after their own health and well-being. It prevents them from being independent and prevents them from be, uh, enjoying a good quality of life during their retirement. The deadly thing about falls is that it can happen anywhere and at any time. So what if we could predict falls? What if we knew when a fall was likely to happen so that we can warn that individual so that they can take the necessary steps to prevent that fall from happening? Well, that is all possible now, thanks to the technology of smart watches. Now, you're probably looking at these images and thinking, how is this a new and innovative technology when you can go down to No Leaming and buy one? Well, you're right, it's, it's available and it's been around for a number of years now. But the idea that I'm proposing uses this technology in a completely new way. So currently, the smartwatches uh, today, their current purpose is to provide updates. Updates on your time, updates on your email, updates on your social media, and the list goes on. So with the idea that I'm proposing, we use the technology that's already currently available in smartwatches, use it differently, and use it for a completely new and different purpose, which is to predict and prevent falls from happening. So you might be asking the question, how can we predict something in life? Well, in medicine, we've actually been predicting things in humans for a very long time. We have predictors or risk factors for all the different kinds of conditions and diseases. 
and we have predictors and risk factors for falls as well. So we can use these factors to predict how likely someone is to experience a fall. According to research, for those over the age of 65, the most important risk factors to experience for a uh, fall are these. Number one, your motion velocity. So how fast you're moving. If you're moving at a high pace, your uh, risk for a fall increases. Number two, your stride length. How large is your step? If your step is quite large, your balance is lower, and so your risk for a fall increases. Number three, your surrounding obstacles. The, if there is a lot of obstacles around you, your risk for a fall increases. And lastly, your heart rate. If your heart rates are very high or very low, your risk for a fall increases. So these are the risk factors, and we can use these uh, to predict falls. And these variables can already be detected using uh, smart uh, technology in smartwatches, such as accelerometers, heart rate sensors, and even infrared sensors. So what makes my idea different is that we're going to use the information about these variables in a completely different way and use it for a completely different purpose, which is to predict and prevent falls. So let me show you what I mean by that. So firstly, the smartwatch worn on the wrist of the uh, individual, it will collect information about those four risk factors. And then it will score that information for each of that risk factor. After that's done, those scores will all be added to give a, com a combined overall score. And depending on what combined overall score you get, you will be placed into either a low risk, a moderate risk, or a high risk group for a fall. And the cutoff points for those three risk groups is based on actual research data that's been done. So essentially, your combined overall uh, score determines what risk group you'll end up in. And if you end up in the moderate to high risk category, you'll get an alert uh, in real time on your smartwatch. And that alert will show you the risk. And that risk will tell you that if you continue to move in this fashion and in this setting, you're likely to experience a fall. Not only that, but the smartwatch will tell you the variable that you need to change in order to reduce your risk. So for example, slow down. So that's important because then the elderly, or uh, the individual, whoever's using it, can use that information and uh, if they follow the instruction, they can reduce the likelihood of experiencing a fall and fall-related injuries. So that's the technology and I just wanna go through an example that will better illustrate my point. And I just want to say that the numbers that I've used on this slide are all arbitrary. Uh, they're just simple numbers that will make it easier for you to understand. In the actual smartwatch uh, technology that's used, the numbers and the cutoff points for the risk groups are based on actual research data. So these are just arbitrary. So let's say an elderly man, 70-year-old male, is inside a mall. He's shopping. And he's rushing to the next shop before it closes. And let's pretend we're his smartwatch. And we're going to collect information about his risk factors, and then we're going to score it. OK? So for number one, motion velocity, because he's moving quite fast, he's rushing, we're going to give him a score 9 out of 10. Secondly, his stride length, because he's taking larger steps to reach there quickly, he's at a greater risk. So we're going to give him a score 7 out of 10. Because he's inside the mall, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of objects, a lot of obstacles. And so that increases his risk. We're going to give him a score of 8 out of 10. And because he's moving fast, his heart rate's gone up. We're going to give him a score of 5 out of 10. When you add all those together, you get a score of 29. So that's his combined overall score. Now, if you look at the, risk fact, uh, the three risk groups, low, moderate, and high risk, the different cutoff points, accor according to this man's overall uh, combined score, he would be placed in the high risk category. That means that the smartwatch will alert this individual about the risk that he, if he continues to move in this fashion and in this environment, he's going to experience a fall. And it will also tell him about his motion velocity because that got the highest score. So it will tell him to slow down. This is all important because it gives the information to the person using it and the person using it can use this to reduce the likelihood of experiencing a fall and fall-related injuries. So that's the technology and how it will help with falls. And there are some clear 
economic benefits. Firstly, it's estimated that through this technology, we'll be able to prevent about 70 to 80% of falls in the elderly. That means we can save New Zealand in the access of over $250 million. The other point is that the global healthcare technology market revenue each year is worth over $450 billion, and there's no reason why New Zealand can't have a piece of that market. If we can create the technology in our country, and if we can export it to different countries, we can certainly get our name in that share. There are also social benefits. Through this technology, we'll be able to reduce the fear of falling in the elderly. That means we can enable them to be more active, to look after their health and their well-being, and enable them to live more independently during their retirement. It's also likely that through this technology, we'll reduce the need for hospitalization and reduce the need for major surgery and medications that, that are used for fall-related injuries. So we can prevent the trauma of major surgery and all the side effects that come with medications for treating injuries such as falls. So before I go into the conclusion, there are some challenges that we can face with this technology. The first is that compliance. We need to make sure that the people using this technology know how to use it, when to use it, and how, uh, where to use it. The other challenge that we might face is that we need to make it accessible. So the people at risk need to have the right access to it. So by making this technology cheap and, access, uh, cheap and affordable, we're ensuring that everyone who needs this technology can have it at the right time. So in conclusion, this technology is of huge benefit to New Zealand and its people. But the best part that I like about this technology is that it will, it will allow elderly people to be more independent, to have greater control over their life, and they can enjoy greater quality of life during their retirement. So I just want to leave you now with the same quote that I started with. What is the most important thing in the world? It is people, it is people, it is people. Thank you. Thank you, Eric Cannon. Um, why do old people fall over? Sarcopenia. It's uh, muscle wasting. So as you age, your muscles uh, become less and less, so that means they have less control over their movement. So independently of obstacles or pace or heart rate, they're inclined to fall over anyway, are they? Yeah, but these are the risk factors. So these are upstream risk factors. Sarcopenia is very low down. There's no, condition, uh, there's no treatment right now to prevent sarcopenia, but these are risk factors that we can modify and prevent. I got the impression that you were saying this technology exists already. Yeah. So what's in it for New Zealand to create? So what, what did you mean by that? Well, you said there's New Zealand could make a good business out of creating this yeah. technology. But so not the technology. The technology already exists. Yes. But it's how we use the technology and the information that we collect from it and using it for a different purpose. You mean making a, a, a wrist watch as it were for an elderly person specifically yeah using the technology saying? that we already have right yeah so how does our technology uh detect obstacles at the moment so there are things called infrared sensors so they basically emit uh infrared signals through waves and then once it bounces back off different objects you can use that to see how large the object is how far it is and things like that it's it's my observation that a lot of people just kind of trip over little rugs or little curbstones. Those wouldn't show up on such a thing, would they? I don't think many people do trip up on just rugs. Uh, in many of the conditions, uh, it's outside of the home setting. And uh, when they're moving around, for example, they're going into the, uh, the park for a walk and they trip up. So with this technology, I think it will pick up such things as well. Uh, but they would have less time to respond. Do you think that you might be patronising elderly people? You could just say to them, be careful. Do yeah. you think that it's hard for them to do that? Hard for them to do what? To be careful. To, ke to be careful. No, I think this is not patronising. This is just giving them information, and it's up to them if they want to use that information. So 
It's like... They've got that information already, though. They know the obstacles. No, they know. no, they don't. No, because falls, are ha they happen when you least expect it. So people don't go out into the living room e expecting to fall. Um, that it happens when you least expect it. So with this technology, you can have some sort of information that, hey, if I move in this way and in this setting, I'll fall. So I just need to change my motion or hold on to something or sit down. Thank you. Yeah.